Hey guys, what's up? Nate Great 321 here, and as you can see, it is 1141. And as you can see, again, I'm driving, and what that means is that I'm going to check the local Goodwill stores here. Uh, it's Sunday, so they don't open till 12, which is nice because I can sleep in a little and still get there right when they open. So, I'm gonna make four stops here. Um, two local Goodwill stores and two stores called uh, Stuff Etc. It's kind of the same deal. Fifth store, uh, probably a little more upscale maybe. So, not taking the camera in with me and not that bold yet. So, uh, I'll just make those stops and if I grab anything, I'll let y'all know. And I'll probably also include the stuff I've bought this week. So, yeah. Well, I'm a little early. So, I don't really feel like sitting around the parking lot for seven minutes like a bum, I guess. So, I'm going to make another stop here. I don't know if you, oh, you can't see it yet. Wow. I started filming too early. Great. Alright, anyway. I'm going to Wendy's. So I'm hungry. Hopefully it's not a line because I got shopping to do. So, yeah. Wendy's. So, yeah, Wendy's has this new... Ooh, boneless chicken. Figured I'd give it a shot here. One second. Alright. Pick that one. Yeah, that's a good one. It's hot. Pretty damn tasty. Yummy. So here we are, stop number one. Goodwill. I'm five minutes late, but I don't think that will be a big deal. So, yeah, and here we are at stop number two. Stuff, etc. Stop number three. Goodwill number two. And the last stop here. Stuff, etc. Number two. So there's a train stopped here. I am the only car in sight. What the hell? Hey everybody, how's it going? Nate Great 321 here. Unfortunately, I didn't find anything at the stores I went to today. It's alright. Um, but actually, after I got home, I went to the local game store by my house, picked up something. And I figured I'd show you that, as well as the stuff that I've picked up recently in the last week or so. So, yeah, here we go. Uh, what I picked up today was Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker for the GameCube. Um, it's a fun game. I remember playing it back when it came out, too. And like a lot of people, I was a little uh, concerned with the, seeing the previews and the kind of art style it was. I was a little turned off by it, assuming it would probably be a little childish and just not my style. But playing it, it's really a good game. I mean, don't let that turn you off. If you have a GameCube and you don't have this game, I definitely recommend, you know, checking it out. You can, I got mine for 15 You'd probably be able to find it for cheaper than that. So definitely recommend it. Next one I got a few days ago is... Uh, Hydro Thunder on the Sega Dreamcast. Fun arcade game. You've probably seen the arcade machines. They're everywhere. Uh, good port to the Dreamcast. It's not four players, unfortunately. That, that would have been really cool. It's only two players, but still, it's a fun game. You know, pretty simple arcade racing game. Good one for the Dreamcast. Next, got some NES games here. Got a boxed copy of RC Pro-Am. Complete's got all the stuff in it. Box is in decent condition. Um, it's, and I don't know. It's a lot of people like it, but I, I'm not really too sure how I feel about it. It's uh, the style. It's very kind of loose controls, and the uh, cars tend to kind of like fishtail and go all over the place when you take corners and stuff. So it gets annoying after a while, and it gets kind of repetitive too. You repeat the same, like, ten tracks or so over and over, except, you know, the second time you play it, there might be more obstacles in the track and stuff like that to try to change it up. But, I mean, even after, like, five levels or something, the levels aren't that distinctly different that they're going to be a totally new experience when you play, if you know what I mean. So, I mean, even five levels in, it gets a little repetitive, but it's still a decent title. I mean, you can probably find it cheap anyway, so. Next, I have a pair of sequels to games I already have. Uh, so, you know, I like the original, so I figured I'd pick up these ones, too. I have Ninja Gaiden 2. Really cool game. Don't know if I like it as much as the original, but still really, really cool. Still as hard as the original, too. They're both really difficult games. 
but still a lot, a lot of fun. And this one is Double Dragon 2. And I think I might like this one more than the original. Um, the button layout looks a little different if you've never played that. Typically on like a beat-em-up game like that, a certain button will be punch, a certain button will be kick, a certain button will be jump, something like that. What they do on Double Dragon 2 is they have B on the NES controller always attack to your character's left, and A always attacks to your character's right. So when you pick up the game and first play it, you're a little thrown off by what you're doing. Um, but after a while, it becomes a little intuitive. You know, it makes it makes sense, and it, it works. You get used to it. So I like the game, though. It's really cool. Next one is a port of an old uh, computer game from the early 80s, like 83 or something like that. Don't know exactly when it came to the NES, but that'd be Load Runner. It's a. Uh, it was on old computer platforms, you know, the Apple, um, the Commodore, and like Amiga platforms in the early 80s and stuff. And actually, I would recommend to you too. Uh, there's a YouTuber I subscribe to. His YouTube name is Black Lily Ape, I believe. I don't have it right in front of me. I think that's it. I'll link it on the side there. He has a series of videos called Matt Chat, where he uh, goes. He picks a game, he'll give a little historical info about it, and then he'll go into a gameplay vid. It's really well done stuff. And one of the episodes is Load Runner, and that's I'd never heard of before that. And that's really the only reason I picked up this game, is from watching that video. So I encourage you to watch that, as well as his other videos. They're all really well done, some cool games, a nice variety of stuff. I encourage you to do that. And I encourage you to try this game. Pretty difficult game. It's kind of hard to explain, so... I won't try. I'll let Matt, a.k.a. Black Lily, explain it to you. So, check him out. Um, let's see. In the last year, I'll conclude with a pair of Genesis games here I got. Uh, one is Columns. Uh, this one always shows up in all the kind of Genesis collection games they put out. Uh, it's just a puzzler game. It plays a lot like those kind of free flash games you find on the internet with the jewels and stuff or whatever. Uh, basically, the objective is to line up three of a kind for jewels, either horizontal, vertical, or diagonal, and then they disappear and fall down. I think you've all probably played something similar to it. Um, it's a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. It's, I don't know whether I'm terrible at it or whether it's really that hard, but yeah, it's challenging, but it's still cool. So, pretty common Genesis game too. You shouldn't have a too hard of a time finding it. And last here is, uh, Mickey and Donald Duck's World of Illusion. And yes, it's a little childish. Yes, it's a little easy. And, you know, obviously it's geared towards children, so it's going to be easy and straightforward. But it's still fun. I mean, Disney really kind of struck the gold mine here with a lot of these 16-bit games. The movie ones, you know, Aladdin and Lion King, and even, like, the Mickey Mouse games and stuff like that. So just because it's Mickey Mouse and all that, don't let that turn you off. It's still pretty entertaining. Got it for five bucks. I don't know if I would have paid, you know, ten or fifteen bucks for it, but for five, I figured why not. So uh, that's it for now. Stay tuned for more, and thanks for watching.